Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. Today, well, I start my journey with Home Assistant and my Intel Nook. So let's get into it. So in my previous video, I talked about the start of my journey with Home Assistant down the rabbit hole, as I called it. And um, you know, there's a link up above if you want to watch that video. Um, but here we are, you know, I'm starting now with the Intel Nook. And, um, you know, in the previous video, I actually, I think I actually said this was a sixth generation uh, Intel Nook. Uh, i5 it's actually a seventh generation so a little bit of a, a bonus for me there um, but what I want to do I just want to show you guys if you've never seen one of these before um, you know what this actually looks like on the inside uh, you know what you get on the inside and um, you know just so you get a bit of an idea and also the dimensions of them as well uh, sometimes these things aren't immediately obvious how big these are so I've just got this little bit of footage here so on the front, you've got a couple of USB 3 ports, which are useful if you just want to plug in a USB stick. And then around the back, you've got an absolute shed load of uh, ports here. So on the left, you've got your barrel connector for your power supply, then your Ethernet, a couple more USB 3 ports, and a couple of HDMI ports as well. So um, really quite handy having all of that there. The, the top of the unit where you, you've got this lid and um, you can actually just clip this off with just a couple of clips there and you, I think you can change that. You can put like a silver lid on it if you want to. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take off the base of the unit. So um, I wouldn't say this is toolless because obviously I'm using a screwdriver here, but it is very, very close to being that. Um, all you've got, you just got these four little screws in the corners and um, you know, your rubber feet go through. Uh, onto the base of those screws so you just kind of like undo these screws and um, the idea is is that you just pull up the four corners and the whole of the base plate comes off and you've got to be careful uh, a little bit because you can actually just pull the rubber feet off but they will just go back onto the the screws if you do that um, but you, you just kind of ease away the different uh, corners really so as you say just pulled off the rubber foot there but um, yeah, you just if you do it all on one side, then it makes it a little bit more difficult to get the thing off. So there you go, off quite easily. And um, this is the inside of the Nook. So quite a compact unit inside. Um, you know, lots going on here. But the key things are, I've got a couple of four gigs of uh, RAM there, DDR4, so it's Kingston memory, and then I've got my Intel NVMe drive, so 256 gig. NVMe drive and um, I'm just going to take that out so you can see just what's underneath here um, you know there's lots of other little ports on the on the board but uh, kind of like headers and things like that but underneath here is the um, Wi-Fi adapter as well so um, this is all built in there's no an external antenna on this um, so kind of keeps it all quite neat in terms of a unit um, so, you know, if, you, if you're getting one of those, make sure you've got that built in. Um, you know, you've got a SATA um, 3 port there as well. Uh, you know, if you don't want the NVMe drive, you can put in a 2.5 inch um, SSD in there as well. And uh, yeah, you know, quite a, a compact unit. I'm not going to go into what all the different chips are uh, on the board, but um, yeah, putting the NVMe drive back into. <laughs> This is, a, this is a real pain to get this back in, uh, in some ways, because the, the area that you're dealing with is, is so compact. So this is actually the fourth attempt at recording this to go back in, believe it or not. Um, the screw is so small um, that uh, you know, it just kept uh, slipping away when I was trying to get the screw back into place. A magnetic screwdriver would be very uh, beneficial uh, in this circumstance. Um, but yeah, you know, like you would with any kind of normal PC board, you just kind of pop that in and then screw that down, and um, that's it really. Then, you know, once 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 you've done that, it's just a case of uh, you know really putting the the base back on and repeating the process in reverse. You know, um, it just clips back in. Make sure you've got where it says front on the base there. Make sure you've got that lined up with the front of the unit and screw the four screws back into place. 
and obviously make sure you've got those rubber rubber feet back on as well uh, before you uh, before you finish so just to give you an idea of overall dimensions so it is almost square but uh, front to back it is 11 centimeters and um, then from uh, side to side it is just a little bit longer it is 11 and a half centimeters so um, you know in terms of height so if you include the feet there it's probably just about three and a half centimeters high so really nice compact unit you know people put this on a visa mount on the back of their television so as i mentioned in my previous video i actually got this from ebay so it was actually used it's not a new unit and from my experience it's always a good uh, thing to go and update the bios on any kind of uh, computer equipment that you get off of ebay you never know what people have gone and done and um, you know, in this instance um, you know it's quite possible that actually the owner of this hasn't even done anything at all with it you know they've probably just unboxed it and used it as is so in this next step i'm just going to go through the process of updating the bios on this and um, you know it is a relatively straightforward process so to update your bios you need to go off to the intel website so i'll put a link down below for that you're going to need to put in the model of nook that you've got and then you will be presented with a page of various options uh, to choose in terms of a, the type of BIOS file that you want to download. Now, the, the easiest one by far, in my opinion, is the downloading the straight um, BIO file, the .bio file, and that's what you um, install just by pressing F7 during the boot process. So you just throw that onto a USB stick and um, switch on your NUC and then press F7. So this is what we're going to go through. So we're going to download the, the bio file. It is quite small um, as, a, as a download. It just takes a few seconds. And then what you're going to need to do is to copy that file onto a formatted USB drive. And then when you've done that, just pop it into one of those uh, spur USB ports on your NUC and switch on the NUC. And um, basically when you get the, the boot up process, uh, you know, when you've got logos on the screen and everything, press F7 to, uh, to, to basically go into the BIOS flashing part of the system, select your USB drive from the list, and then you'll see the, the .bio file there. So you just press enter on that and uh, it'll reboot and basically start the uh, flashing process. So leave the USB stick in place. Um, as you can see, uh, the BIOS on this was 2019 and now it's being updated to 2021. So a good couple of years old uh, in terms of uh, functionality that's missing from the NUC. But um, this takes two or three minutes to go through. So I've just sped up this little clip for you. But once it's done, uh, you, know, you can remove the USB stick, it, it'll reboot when it's finished um, and you can remove the USB stick. Uh, so, uh, but leave it in place until that actually happens. And um, just to show you, you know, in, I've gone back into the BIOS flashing again, and as you can see, 0075, 14th of the 10th, 2021. So my previous video got quite a few comments on it about different approaches that people have gone and taken with regards to this. And obviously, you know, I've done an awful lot of research uh, myself and, you know, th there's various options available to me. You know, a lot of those um, we talked about on the previous video, but in, in summary, you know, I can go down the Proxmox route, um, you know, I can go Linux, I can go the, uh, the Nook um, OS install image for it for Home Assistant. Uh, so lots of different things that you can you can do here and you know i really had to kind of like weigh up the different options and, and ultimately what i want to use this for you know this is probably overpowered for um just for home assistant but obviously you know from my perspective this video um is trying to cover all bases for for everybody really and not everybody may have uh the the full technical capability to do some of the more advanced stuff so there's a really good post on the home assistant uh, forum that, that does actually 
try and help you understand what is the best option to go with this. I think Proxmox is something outside of that. You know, I think if you want to um, virtualize your environment, then um, you, you know that you need to read up a little bit more about that. With this, with this only having the single NVMe drive in it, that's probably not a good option for Proxmox. I think Proxmox needs um, two drives in it. So you know, ultimately, I'd end up having to stick um, you know something on a, a USB external drive. Um, which is not really something I want to do with this. I want it to be an all-in-one type of unit. So, um, you know, this this page on uh, on the Home Assistant website, you know, I think this this covers the options fairly well. So, for my part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the um, the OS install, so effectively the the Nook image, and. Um, it's a very straightforward process, but ultimately, you know, you've got to follow the instructions. So that's actually what's going to be the next part in this series is, is me really kind of getting it all installed on the Nook and, and getting a basic configuration up and running. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you, um, you know, want to come along on the rest of the journey and you get notifi notified about that. Um, but, you know, as always, you know, if you've got any uh, comments or any thoughts on um, what I'm doing, uh, with this, you know, feel free to drop them down below, you know, any questions, anything like that. And, um, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. But you know, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.